So this is a video in response to this question on the STL Translation Productivity Community website and it's all about hiding numbers in the editor with quite a, a complicated file. So the questions come from Alberto and he's kindly given me a file and the file he gave me looks like this. It's a test file and you can see he's, I don't know if he's been made this up, but it's full of all kinds of um, difficult numbers that you might want to exclude from your translation and the question he's asked really is how does he exclude those completely so presumably he hasn't actually got to localize these numbers or maybe he handles them separately but what I'm going to do is just show you how to handle those um, within studio so to begin with we'll create a quick project so create a new project I've got a little template called the STLX Lift Toolkit because I'm going to use that so I've set this up already I'll just call this toolkit so I can find it and remove it afterwards. We're going Spanish to English. And what I'm going to do is I actually copied Alberto's file 10 times, put it into different folders, just because I wanted to show you how this worked. So I dropped my folders in. So there's all my files. I've got three, four, and three inside those um, folders. You can see them like that. I click on Next. I've got one translation memory. Now I did cheat a little bit. Um, some of his sentences contained numbers at the beginning so what I also did, I'll just show you this, was I created a custom um, a custom segmentation rule here to specifically split that sentence for me. I'm not going to go into the details on that one um, but just to make it easier for me so I got all the numbers as I wanted them. Um, so I click on next again, in fact I can just finish at that point. So what this is going to do do now is it's gone through, converted my files to bilingual format, copied them to target languages and pre-translated them just in case I had anything in the TM. In this case I definitely don't have because it's empty. So if I open that now and if I just, there's all my files, if I just, um, just to show you as well how this works, so there, there they all are in the folders and because I've got this include subfolders checked, um, when I do that I can see all the files in one go which means if I wanted to I can open, open them all up in one go. Um, but I'm just going to open one for the time being just to show you the basics here. So the file has opened up and you can see as I scroll down here, here's all this stuff that I want to get rid of. Now the basic idea here, you can see where this is where I've created the segmentation rule because this 34,2 was actually in the same sentence as this and the 34,2 dot was in the same sentence as that. And they were the only two I struggled a little bit in terms of being able to get rid of this from the um, using a regular expression, well, using one regular expression rule to get rid of all of this stuff. Um, so that's why I cheated just a little bit. It's not cheating, it's using the software to its, uh, to its best advantage. Anyway, if I had that one file, what I can do, there's my regular expression. So I basically just went through and added things that would help me identify it until I had one expression. And so you would obviously create an expression to suit the text that you are using. If I now just filter on that, you can see that that then allows me to pick out all of that stuff. So no text in there, just all that stuff I want to get rid of. So if I select them all, and I do that by going down to the bottom number, hold the shift key down, you can't see that, but that's what I'm doing, my finger is on the shift key, and I'm left clicking with a mouse. I've, I use a different color shading because I just find it easier to see than I know for sure that I've what I've got because it's such an outrageous color. Then what I want to do is I can right click copy source to target. I don't have to but I'm going to in this instance. I'll right click again and I'll say change the segment status to translated just because it helps me with my statistics and then I'm just going to press control L or I can come back over here and right click and say lock segments. And when I do that they're all locked. If I come back up to the top now and reset the filters and then filter on unlocked all I have in this whole file is just the text because all the locks, all the locked stuff, if I filter on the lock this time, here's all the locked stuff. You can see this is all the stuff that I've picked up with a regular expression. And this is all the stuff that Alberto wanted to move. So that's all well and good, and it's very easy to do with one file. And actually, if I just don't save any of the changes in it. And actually I could do it by just opening all the files and just open for translation. But if these were really big files, it might not be practical to do that. So what I'm going to do is to show you another way to handle all of that using the STLX Lift Toolkit. 
So to do that, well, first of all, I'm going to start up the STLX Lift Toolkit. So I have this added in here, which I just did with the Menu Maker app. Here's my STLX Lift Toolkit. I then go back to my projects, and I need to open the project folder for my for my project, and that takes me to the location of where all the files are. Now all the individual STLX lifts that I want are all in here, but to save me going through them all in one go, I'm just going to take the STL proj file, pick it up like that, and just drop it into there, and you can see that that's pulled out every single one of the STLX lifts. So if I then hold down the shift key and select all of those, click on the search. Oh, and then I better make sure I get that expression right, hadn't I? So I just open a file a second. I go back to my review. And if I just copy that expression, so I'm going to use the same expression really. And I put it into here. So there's my expression. I click on use regular expressions. I don't have to click on find all, but if I wanted to double check it, I can click on find all, and that goes through and finds every segment that match that, that regular expression. You can open that little window there, which makes it a bit easier to see really. And you can see here's the file names down the side. So it's picked everything up and if you watch the file names you can see they change to the different folders, the different documents. So that's gone and done everything through the entire project for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to first of all copy source to target. You need to do two operations here. The first thing is copy source to target and click on change it. That's it. Then uncheck the copy source to target and click the translated and the lock segment and click change it. And that's it. So now if I was to open up every file in that project and I scroll down now, there's all my lock segments in the first file. In the second file, in the third file, in the fourth file, fifth file, sixth file, you get the idea, seventh file, oh I've probably gone quicker than I could count, oh no there they are, eight, nine, ten, there we go. So that's it, so I've done the entire project using the STLX Lift Toolkit in just a couple of clicks once I've got my regular expression sorted out. So that's basically how you use it. What you could do then if you wanted to do an analysis on that project, but you wanted to exclude all of the lock segments, which I guess is perhaps what Alberta is trying to do, you go to your project settings to batch processing, um, analyze files, and you can say report lock segments as a separate category. And then when you run the analysis, it won't include any of those lock segments in your analysis. And you can run the analysis, I may as well show you the whole thing now. I can go to my batch tasks. If I do it through here in the files view where I am, whichever files I have selected when I run the analyze files, that's what it will analyze. So if I just wanted to analyze those two, or just those particular three, for example, and run the batch tasks, that's what it would do. If it was a massive project, you could go to the projects view, select the project you want, and run the batch tasks from there. And then it will do it for the entire project, which is what I'll do here. So I'll analyze the files. All my files are selected as you can see. I'll just click on finish. Completed, that's it. I go to my reports now. There's my analyze files report. And if I come down there, you can see it's separated out the locked and it's put all of the locked. It's still reported on it, but it's put it somewhere else so that I can easily separate it from my from, from my analysis. So that's how you do it. Hope you found that useful and explanatory.